My name is Ali. I'm a doctor and YouTuber. I'm Taymor. I'm a data scientist and writer. And you're listening to Not Overthinking, the weekly podcast where we think about happiness, creativity, and the human condition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of, you guessed it, Not Overthinking. Ali, what's going on? Oh, man, not much. I had like four days of long days at work. So, you know, that thing of waking up at six, uh, getting up at, uh, uh, so, uh, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this, but like basically waking up at half six, getting home at half ten, repeating the process. I feel like, I feel like even last time we, we recorded yeah. the episode, I was kind of coming off a string of these and yeah. I was like having a little whine about. <laughs> yeah, you literally don't stop going on about this. <laughs> Mate, I'm, little, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of counting down the days until August where I'm going to be unemployed. Um what about you? What's going on in, in life as a self-employed dude? Dude, I'm still ill. I've been, I've had this cold for like over two weeks now. It sucks. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Mm. Um, so that there's that. I thought we'd, uh, I thought we'd start this podcast uh, episode by having a little chat about the podcast in general. I think we, we do this, I don't know, maybe every couple of months we end up doing this. Yeah, when we're in a slump. But before we do that, <laughs> who is the sponsor for this week's episode, Tamil? Ah, good question. This week's episode is sponsored by none other than Skillshare. Skillshare is the best way to teach yourself anything online. They have a ton of uh, ton of online classes. I've done a, you've done a bunch of Skillshare classes. I've done a bunch of Skillshare classes. So some of my favorite ones are um, a dude called Thomas Frank, who I, I go on about all the time. He's a big productivity YouTuber. Um, he has a class on uh, productivity fundamentals, like how to build your own productivity system, which I really liked. Uh, and recently, I think like last month, he released a class about habit formation, which I was watching in bed on my phone while eating a burger uh, takeaway <laughs> and thinking, oh, I, re- I really should form some better habits. Um, and there's a few others that I've taken over the yeah, so John Olson, John Olson is like this uh, big YouTuber Instagram guy who takes absolute bangers on Instagram. He's got this whole online class on how to take good photos for Instagram, which I took a lot of inspiration from. And Brandon Wolfel, who's one of my favorite Instagram photographers, he, he, he posts like amazing Instagram grids of like really pretty girls, but like with sick lighting and like really cool neon effect and all, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I look at, I look at it for the lighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the neon lights, the fairy lights, all of that stuff. So he's got, he's, got, uh, he's got a class on Skillshare. Skillshare original actually about how to, how to take these sorts of photos and how to get in contact with these sorts of girls. So um, I found that to be quite helpful as well. Um, so because Joshua is sponsoring this uh, this episode, if you're interested in learning stuff online, you can sign up for a free two-month free trial of Skillshare by going to skillshare.com forward slash not overthinking. Um, and then after your trial's up, an annual subscription is like less than $10 a month. And for that, you get access to thousands of classes on covering literally everything from like design, creativity, cooking, photography, video editing, all sorts of stuff. You can even check out my own class on video editing uh, if, you, if you like, if you want to become like a YouTuber or something like that. So yeah, thanks Skillshare. Skillshare.com slash not overthinking. Good way to learn new stuff in the new year. How was that as a plug? Yeah, that was a good plug. I think it, I think it, get, it always gets a bit rambly when you start going on about your class. I think ending it before that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I want people to watch my class because the way Skillshare works is that if people watch like a, a, every minute of my class that someone watches, I make about like two pennies. Really? So if there's enough minutes that rack up, I can, I can, I can make some, some reasonable money off of Skillshare. Dozens of pounds. Dozens. <laughs> <laughs> Tens of pounds. <laughs> Awesome. Um, all right. So podcast. We didn't do an episode last week. Yeah. I feel I feel like we're in a bit of a slump with this whole podcast thing. And I don't know if that's just me kind of being currently tired right now because you made yourself a cup of tea, but you didn't make me one. Hmm. Well, I think I think I always dread it when it comes around to recording the podcast because we're always scrambling for a topic. Yeah. And I'm like, every week I'm like, okay, this is the week where we have absolutely nothing and everyone stops <laughs> listening to this. <laughs> you know, every week that goes through my head. And I feel like, I feel like it's a bit like, you know, stuff like going to the gym where you kind of dread it beforehand it's like oh man we have to I have to go to the gym today but like once you're there it's fine yeah so I, I think like oftentimes it's like that for me do you know what I mean I know what you mean I think I really used to have this like in the in the early days of the YouTube channel where I'd sit down and think okay well I need to get two videos out a week so crap what do I talk about this week um but then over time I sort of built up this sort of content library plus whole list of possible pod- possible video topics which is just like ever expanding now so it's like I've got so many more ideas for videos than I feasibly have the time to actually make yeah so I wonder if that's just a f- for the podcast if we just need to figure out something like that. But then I feel like with the podcast as well, given that it's a because it's all, it's always like a two way discussion, and given that we don't want to do necessarily advice giving you topics all the time, I think we are restricting the amount of topics that we can actually do. Um, I don't know. So I feel like personally, I think I should uh, I should be more more of a an artisan or a, more of a professional when it comes to this because, for example, you know. Like, okay, I'll, I'm reading a bunch of stuff during the week. I have a bunch of thoughts and things. I don't really write them down. Oh, I don't mate. have a way to manage my, like, knowledge and all this, and my notes and my highlights and random clippings and things. Why the hell not? I don't write in a diary before bed, all this kind of stuff. Where, like, I know that my life would be, like, ten times better if I did did these things. Have you taken Tiago's Building a Second Brain course? No, I haven't. Why the hell not? I'll, I'll give you my login details for it. You don't even have to pay for it. <laughs> 
I'll tell you what. Look, I, I know that this stuff exists. I know that like... And you've literally got all the time in the world. You control your own schedule. You can wake up whenever you want. You can do what you want in the Dude, day. the bottleneck isn't that I haven't done Tiago's building a second brain course. What's the bottleneck? I, it's just that I'm a, <laughs> a lazy twat, <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay, no. So the thing is, I think like I do a lot of my reflection in bed. But then yeah. when I get into bed, I don't like to have my phone. And so I can't write stuff down. Okay. So what do I do about that? Have a little journal and a pen next to you? Yeah, but then it won't be digitized and I won't be able to like... Have your iPad? That's still a light. Why do you do your reflection before bed, like while you're in bed then? Well, because I get into bed, I'm like, hmm, what a day, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Okay, so I think, I think, yeah, basically my point is part of the remedy, I think, would be if, I mean, but you do all this stuff, right? Like you do the daily journaling, you highlight all your notes and stuff, you have a whole system for everything, right? Yeah, but the sort of stuff that I highlight is not... Uh, Why aren't I, you coming up with a new good topic every week then? Because most of the stuff that I highlight is in is in the in the realm of kind of like business or entrepreneurship or like, you know, productivity, oh. that that sort of stuff. I don't read books like about transaction analysis yet and about kind of social socializing and, and, and things like that. I did read a, a really good book called Superhuman Social Skills. Skills, which we can talk about. I've got some good highlights Why? on that. I have. I got that on Kindle recently. Did you tell me to get it? I don't know. I, think I don't know I, how I got I, it. I think I mentioned it on a, on a podcast episode a few months ago. Oh. Like Tynan. I think I was talking about Tynan and this idea uh, idea for buying an island. He's that. He's that guy. Right. Um, but no, I've got a whole system for this. And but it's like all of the stuff that I listen to is the stuff that is not the theme of this podcast. Is more like if it were a business podcast. How do you, how do you not get bored of that same stuff all the time? I mean, you've been just reading almost exclusively that stuff for a few years now. Yeah. Like it, what what are you getting from it at this point? At this point, what I'm getting from it is information arbitrage, essentially, because okay. because now. Uh, Basically, all the stuff that I consume podcast-wise is with a lens of, okay, is this, will this be helpful for me? Sort of either how I think about life in general, which is rare to get those insights now, or, oh, how can I spin this my own way to turn it into a YouTube video that would benefit the masses and like more aimed at students and stuff as opposed to, you know, C-level executives, which some of the podcasts would be aimed at. Right. And so that's kind of the lens that I'm thinking of it as. And which is, and yeah, I agree. Like if I'm, I don't gain much from listening to episode an episode of the Tim Ferriss show anymore, but <laughs> still, <laughs> I still listen to the episode of the, of the Tim Ferriss show. And there are things for example in on the podcast invest like the best that recent episode with 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 matt clifford that was kind of interesting that was sick but there was stuff in that that we're not feasibly going to talk about on this podcast i mean apart yeah, from the yeah, ambition sure. thing which is kind of interesting sure, sure. um including what else do i listen to like bulletproof radio from by dave asprey which is all about you know how to live longer and live healthier and happier and all that yeah. stuff which, which again is not really the our, our podcast isn't about you know uh, supplements that you can use to you know increase your mitochondrial function and therefore live longer not until we get sponsored by what exactly of <laughs> so dave asprey if you're listening to this <laughs> Uh, reach out <laughs> yeah we'll be shilling supplements <laughs> <of the brothers. laughs> incidentally the the very first sponsor request i got on youtube was a supplement really it's called brain quicken <laughs> what the hell does that do <laughs> it, it, it was like some weird combination of like caffeine and like loads like 10 other things and they were like oh we've got a qualified nutritionist that has l said that this is legit therefore you should shill it on your youtube channel <laughs> oh wow <laughs> and i was like no man you know i'm doctor i've got <laughs> i've got integrity <laughs> i don't i don't do that sort i of have stuff. a wife <laughs> Um, okay, wait. So, what were we saying? We were talking. So, you uh, consume and listen to and read a lot more random ass stuff than yes. I do. Yeah, but you should diversify, man. I've, I've, I tell you this every day. I agree. I should diversify. Um, you should diversify, and I should be less lazy. Can okay. we agree on that? What, what, what should I diversify into? I mean, that, that that's the whole point. Not something that I can tell you to. <laughs> like, find some stuff, dude. <laughs> Broaden your mind. Okay. No, I think the, the the lens that you're approaching this is the lens that uh, sort of entrepreneurship, business advice is is, is all done now and you've been doing it for three years therefore there's nothing more to gain from it whereas i right. uh, you know fundamentally fundamentally disagree with that especially because now i'm we're in the in the whole business thing i'm approaching a new step which is all about kind of hiring people and scaling and growing right as opposed to the how do you how do you get started bit yeah but look i'm not saying stop doing that stuff look you read a ton of stuff every week like you, like you, read, you had this video about oh how i read 100 books a year yeah or that, that, that was a total lie <laughs> make like two of those books like not business <laughs> books dude <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh -huh. I want to disagree with you. How many one. how many random PDFs do you read every week? Oh, none. Why? Because I freaking have a full time job. <laughs> <laughs> This is the problem. <laughs> when you're spending 14 hours a day at work and then you get home and you have to churn out one or two videos each week for sponsorship video deadlines, it's really genuinely quite hard to make the time to read random ass PDFs that don't directly impact on these sorts of things. Hmm. And I think that's one of the problems with this whole like productivity thing is that 
it means that I don't, I, I, I feel like I don't have the bandwidth to explore random interests like I did when I had lo- lo- loads of spare time. That seems like a bad way to live, right? I'm sure there is some balance to be found between, you know, tilling the content fields and, you know, doing general interest stuff. And like, I would argue that it's short-sighted for you to just like focus on the immediate, like, okay, I need, I need my two videos this week or whatever. What's it going to be? Better like, better ask Tim Ferriss. Like, it's this long-term sort of your own personal development, development of your like content brand and all this kind of stuff, surely you should be branching out a little bit. Yes, I agree. And that's something that I think about on a weekly basis that, oh, you know, I'm doing too much of, of the same thing right now. You're, you're just, you're staying afloat kind of thing. Yeah, right? exactly. Now I feel like I'm struggling to keep my head above water. Right, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to these sponsored, sponsored video deadlines, I think it's because I haven't built enough margin into my life right now. Um, there's that new book uh, or newish book that's been going around the personal development world called Margin, uh, which is all about this thing of, uh, you, you know, taking on too many things and therefore not being able to, as you said, uh, explore the more long-termy benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, for example, this week, I didn't go to the gym once. Last week, I went to the gym like twice, uh, yeah. you know, twice. I have not cooked at home for the last like six months. I've been living off McDonald's drive throughs takeaways and, the you know, dinner from the hospital restaurant. Yeah. It is getting to a point where I think that is fine for the short term. Yeah. While I still have sort of four, six, five months of this job left, um, while also having these sponsored video deadlines come up, while also doing physiology supervisions on the side. I don't think this season of life is the season in which I should really be beating myself up for not diversifying more. Okay. And so essentially, I'm delaying absolutely everything until August when I'm, when I'm going to be unemployed. Because the thought I've got in my head is, oh, I won't have a job then from August. So now I'll ah. have, then I'll have that 15 hours a day free time that this, I can do other stuff. This in. sounds like the deferred life I know it does <laughs> and every time I think that way I think oh this sounds suboptimal <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be thinking about oh you know come August then I'll be I'll be able to do stuff yeah I think the staying afloat thing and just like just managing to keep yourself above water my part my past couple of weeks have kind of been like that where it feels like almost every day there's like stuff that comes up that I have to do mm. and so then I don't end up like going to the gym and like even work wise you know there's just a bunch of tasks on my plate that I just have to do I don't really get I haven't really had the time to sort of zoom out too much and it's been kind of grim to be honest i don't really like living like that yeah i think one thing that i need to do um is kind of start saying no to more things so like for example almost any time someone emails me and says they want to grab coffee i sort of look at my calendar and think oh monday is 7 p.m i've got i've got a slot free all right let's do coffee then and i don't think about the fact that i need to prepare this physiology supervision or i need to find one day one day a week that week to film videos or something i just think oh i'll, I'll figure it out yeah and that was all fine and dandy when i had fewer things to be doing um, and when i was a student where going to work was completely optional but now that sort of the actual hours in the day are, are a limiting factor i need to start saying no to more of that so like mm-hmm. for example on friday i had i had a day off because after this kind of four long days i had a day off and i had breakfast with a friend in the morning and i got coffee with another friend in the afternoon and then i had coffee with another friend in sort of like mid-afternoon um and then i was teaching later that night and so like it felt like the whole day was yeah. sort of things back to back whereas if i'd cut down on the coffees with these two two people that I probably didn't need to have coffee with then maybe i would have been able to do more zooming out but it was good coffee and it was like good social interaction and stuff hmm. so i don't know i don't know where that balance is between kind of long-term thinking and short-term being like right we need to get a sponsored video out for next week yeah okay yeah look that makes sense i um, feel like this is I, I i feel like people who do this sort of thing for too long that's when the phenomenon of burnout happens yeah because you're just sort of operating at full capacity and not really having the margin to think harder about what you're doing yeah yes that sounds good um i guess you'll do your deferred life plan despite yeah. preaching against it exactly i'm gonna have loads of more podcast topics from august yeah <laughs> <laughs> from September rather because like in August I'll, I'll, I'll need a month to sort my life out <laughs> oh, oh of course yeah yeah and then from September I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be on it with the ideas you know you might just wait till the new year you might as well yeah, wait, just yeah wait you know what 2021. <laughs> so you're basically going to give us all the podcast episodes for the next few uh few months okay yeah so I think part of the issue is that like is is sort of the content side of me not like actually curating enough stuff over the week mm. and you I don't know not reading the right stuff or whatever I think the other side is that I, I always think okay so for example I think we I think there's a few good, very good potential episodes we could do, but it requires a bit of organization. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I recently finished a book um, called... (laughs) <laughs> shit what was it called <laughs> I can't even remember the title it was that good uh, what the hell was it called give me a sec <laughs> am I insane how can I is it not even on your Kindle it is on my Kindle somewhere you're literally looking at the Kindle I app don't right know now how to use the app come on mate you can figure it out library also it might have been a PDF filter ah it's called I'm okay you're okay right <laughs> <laughs> glad we got there in the end <laughs> alright so I recently finished this book about this groundbreaking like thing uh, called transactional analysis which has like changed the way I think 
And I think, I think that like, I think these ideas were kind of popular in like the 60s and 70s when they were first coming about. But I don't think most, I think like no one really knows about it anymore, apart from like the, a few kind of niche groups of people who do know about it. And I think this is one of the ideas that I'd like to, you know, we have a bit of a platform here on the podcast and stuff. And I would like to uh, sort of, what's the word? Disseminate uh, this particular I'd idea. I'd like to preach the gospel. I like transactional analysis. I like, to, yeah, I'd like to preach the gospel of transactional analysis and hopefully get it more into the mainstream. However, that would require. I mean, I think to do this really well, it would require us finding someone who really knows their stuff, like someone who you know, has researched this stuff or whatever, to you know be a guest on the podcast and, and we discuss it with them and stuff. So I, I think I, there's that, and then there's a few other things where if. If we just have a bit more organization about the podcast, then we could actually do some killer episodes, I think. Okay, but as in we like just the, don't... the ones that require getting other people on board. Yeah, the ones that require getting other people on board and also like revisiting, you know, the hits with other people also have, uh, joining in on the discussion and stuff. Okay, so it sounds like... Um, so uh, approaching this from the lens of how you would uh, figure out where the holes in a business process are, uh, which is something that I've been looking at recently with the whole growing and scaling the business and all that. It sounds like one problem is getting topic like finding the topics to talk about in the first place and another problem is that for some of the topics they would definitely benefit from having an opinion other than mine and yours because we're basically identical in most fronts um and therefore that's a logistical kind of operations sort of game yes so if you imagine this as a business it's sort of there would be a head of operations and head of logistics who would manage that side of thing and arrange yeah kind of like a location and sort of timings and tell us where to turn up yeah and then there would be some sort of system by which you can feed in topic ideas into the into the pipeline yep um given that you have a place in london and london is generally very central like how hard would it be to arrange like a day where i am off work and you are <laughs> you can therefore be off work yeah. and try and kind of batch record yeah i think that would be people. good yeah. yeah i think london's a good kind of uh middle point where you know guests can join us there and you can come down and, and we can definitely do some some cool stuff but yeah it just requires a bit of like organization ahead of time yeah and i think like given that we're both in sort of keeping head above water it's 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 hard to think about oh you know in in, in three weeks time let's schedule in this person because that would make for a good podcast episode in five weeks time yeah it's more like oh crap it's a sunday we need to find a find a topic to talk about this week yeah so i hope you can empathize with my keeping my head above water and rather than <laughs> optimizing for the long term yeah look i can but the thing that gets me is that i feel for the past couple of weeks i felt like i've just been keeping my head above water but i've still wasted a colossal <laughs> amount of time each day <laughs> It's like really bad. What, watching David Dobrik? Dude, I bought some David Dobrik merch. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I was telling you about this. I was uh, I was having one of my shower YouTube sessions where I lie down in the bathtub and have the shower like pouring nice hot water over my body. And uh, <laughs> with clothes on or without clothes on? Without clothes on. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, one of those ones. Uh, one of those showers. And I was on Instagram and I was watching David Dobrik's story and it was like, hey guys, I just dropped my new merch. Swipe up and check it out. I was like, oh okay <laughs> all right and then i swiped up and then i bought some <laughs> <laughs> Where is, has it arrived yet what is it i think it's arriving uh, at london i think it has actually arrived so when i go back on monday or tuesday or something it's like a pink hoodie oh it, it says clickbait on it that's his like merch brand oh that's nice yeah solid um so yeah, I, i'm still pretty into that have you watched any david dobrik yet no uh, mate i've been keep, 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 keeping my head above water <laughs> yeah fine uh, okay, fine. Look, maybe this will be the week that I finally have systems for the things in my life and start writing more things down and organizing things. And uh, yeah. Anyway, so what's what are we actually talking about this week? <laughs> Having gone on for about 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, so there were a few things that I've been thinking about. Uh, so, you know, we recently moved into this new place in London and we occasionally have uh, people over. And so for the past two weeks, we've had a, a dinner party each week uh, with you know, invite over some people and have dinner and stuff and hang out. And that's made me start thinking quite a lot about, about the art of gathering, which is a book that I'm, that I'm also reading right now. Oh, wow. You're reading a lot of books these days. Dude, yeah. Like <laughs> three books this year. Damn. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so the dinner. So uh, let's talk about the dinner party stuff, and then I I, I want to start talking about this book. It's amazing. So two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, whatever, I had a bunch of people around. Uh, I knew I didn't know. I knew one of them very well, and I'd met a couple of them like once or twice, and then a couple of them I didn't know at all. And so it was like this mix, a, a mixture of like people knowing each other to various degrees. Mm. Um, 
And I think, how many people were there? I think there were eight people in total. And I think that was a little big, to be honest. Um, I think when we were actually, so that, well, there were sort of two parts of the evening, I suppose. There was the pre-dinner where we were sort of chilling in the sofa area and kind of talking and stuff. And I think when there's eight people, it, it, it sort of splits off into two conversations. Mm. And then there's the dinner and we have a sort of nice big dinner table, you know, that can fit like everyone on it. And then it, it was more like sort of one conversation, everyone sort of being part of the same energy. And I think for the, I think the, for the dinner vibes, it was pretty good because like everyone was you know talking together about the same thing and i think that's always quite nice um but i think in the on the uh the pre-dinner the sort of sofa session uh it was less good so i think maybe like i think maybe like five or six people would have been better for a for that kind of dinner for like an intimate dinner at someone's house you know okay so you're saying eight people in the sofa vibe is naturally going to split up into multiple yeah, conversations and, and that's and the thing is also like if there's eight people okay basically i have this theory that the, the larger the group size a the more volatile the vibe and i'll explain that in a sec and b the longer the amount of time you need to spend to like become intimate right so for example okay so what do i mean by the more volatile the vibe if there, i think if there's more people like there's just more chance for the vibe to get like disrupted or shifted yeah and so um yeah i, I think it requires very good hosting um to kind of maintain it and sort of guide the vibe to it and keep it in like a good place where everyone's getting more intimate and that kind of stuff whereas if it's just left to its own accord with like eight people you know a whole evening could easily go by fitting between you know random topics or whatever and not really not really like getting anywhere and like it'll be, i'm sure it'll still be pleasant or whatever but like it won't really get anywhere okay and how are you defining get anywhere like uh, are, you, are you saying that the, the more intimate the better essentially oh uh, yeah partly or like yeah just by get anywhere i mean like make some progress together as a group uh, some some progress on what uh um, on your theory about transactional analysis or on just some pro you know, honestly just some progress on anything any okay. any continued threat <laughs> and whether that's like you know people opening up to each other about certain things or whether that's exploring a particular topic and like really getting really getting down into it or whatever but I, I just think like with larger groups it is so easy for it to just be like oh you talk about movies for a bit talk about this for a bit talk about that for a bit and now oh, it's time for everyone to go home or whatever and like that's fine it's like it's pleasant but it's not you know it's not optimum <laughs> yeah it's just it's not that meaningful okay so I think okay so you want more DMCs uh yeah DMCs sure so like I think smaller group size is better for that okay basically so I think like six people is what I'd recommend for like a dinner at someone's house um the other thing is I think there is actually something special about hosting people at your house like if for example you know we live next to a bunch of restaurants and stuff if we had you know if the eight of us or whatever had just gone to a restaurant or something it would have been a completely different mm. vibe and I think especially when you're sort of meeting new people it's much nicer to do that in the setting of someone's home so for example one of the guys uh who was there he he was sort of invited by another guy who was supposed to be there but couldn't make it and so it turned out that the, this guy came on his own basically and he didn't know anyone there and he didn't know me yeah. so like none of us had met this guy yeah. he, and, he, and he sort of came um, but it was still really nice because it was sort of you know I feel like everyone being in the in the same like intimate space kind of made that a lot nicer whereas if it's like some dinner at a restaurant and one of the guys literally knows no one there yeah, that's it's, like, it's much, that's it's much weirder for them and for everyone else whereas like I think inviting someone into your own space like that it kind of it, it like sort immediately of, sort of supercharges that connection yeah 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 um, did the guy acknowledge the weirdness of it <laughs> yeah yeah we joked about it yeah uh, okay. sure. he was yeah. like he kind of joked that like, I literally know no one here yeah yeah, plus, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I was the plus one of a guy who could make it yeah it was chill it was chill yeah it was totally chill but I think at a restaurant or something that would have been a lot worse so I think yeah I mean do you invite people over your place My, you seem to have people squatting at yours a lot yeah I have a lot of squatters we, we, we haven't hosted a proper dinner party in a while really why yeah. don't you do that kind of stuff um, I mean we would like to it's just again you know <laughs> when you're struggling to keep your head above water and when Molly and I have different like schedules and stuff and it's rare that we're both in the house in the same evening with nothing else going on yeah and we know that enough in advance to be able to invite people feasibly as opposed to it being like a last minute last minute thing yeah then yeah it just sort of falls by the wayside but that's another sort of uh, I, th I think we did an episode a few months ago about being intentional with social interactions and stuff yeah and I basically have zero intentionality when it comes to arranging these sorts of things. Hmm. The only way I end up hanging out with people is if someone is kind of kind of reaches out to me and I'm like, oh, I've got a space in my calendar, let's hang out because that's yeah. that's easy and that's it feels productive. But uh, you know, <laughs> feels productive. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> uh, feels productive as in it makes me feel that oh oh the, the, this is a valuable thing to do. I'm getting social interaction. This was this is going to be fun and stuff. Okay. Um, as opposed to if someone was like if so someone were like you know why don't you watch this episode of Netflix? We'd be like okay, you know it wouldn't feel productive in that it wouldn't be a useful thing for my life to fine. watch Netflix but it would be to socialize with someone okay fine. that's what I mean by productive in this regard 
but given that like the, given the logistical friction of arranging hangouts yeah um it's a lot yeah uh, it's just kind of falls by the wayside when you have no margin in your life yeah i think th i think this one only came about this one came about after like many months of me and another guy going back and forth saying oh man we should organize something oh man we should do this <laughs> and then eventually like i think the turning point was when we made a group chat yeah and said all right hey everyone dinner at my place time here's the time in the place you know let me know if you can make it and, and i think an important thing was also that you can't be too accommodating yeah so like it was literally like okay guys these are the two days like these are the two evenings i can do let me know which one's better for you a couple of people were like okay thursday's better for me and it was like okay it's thursday and then a few people were like oh i can't make it and that's fine yeah. they, they couldn't make it that, that was it i think if you're, if you're too accommodating it just won't happen i was reading a tweet about this almost the almost this exact thing which was which was saying that in like to get any kind of uh dinner type thing together when when you're an adult it's about finding one other person and then getting a time and a place and then letting other people know what's going on yeah yeah <laughs> and if they can't make it then that's fine yeah <laughs> but, and, you, and you know that at the very least the two of you are going to have a good time yeah and that's how i feel about like even now with my with my uni friends when we're arranging to hang out i'll usually message one one of the dudes individually and be like bro yeah. want to go for a brunch this day be yeah. like okay cool we've got time <laughs> now at the very least even if no one else turns up i'll have a great chat <laughs> yeah and then we just kind of open invite I invite people to that so i think there's a lot to be said for that yeah i think that's a solid way to do it um and so another thing with this one was that okay i think this this like brings me nicely onto this book that i'm reading called oh, the art of gathering good segue um because i think another thing that so i think this was eight people which was i think bigger than i would have liked to be honest but i think it was i think it was it was good in the end but the, you know with the wrong eight people with the wrong mix of eight people it could have easily been less good um but i think one thing is uh th that i've been thinking a lot is that I think we've, we've talked about this before where I think in general, there's a bit of a culture of like indiscriminate inclusivity where it's like seen as bad to be exclusionary in any way, shape or form. And I think that is, I think that's really bad for socializing. Um, so for example, there were like, you know, there were other people who kind of knew a few, a couple of the people who were at this dinner mm. who I hadn't, who I intentionally hadn't invited because it would have been like, look, we have to, you know, we can't have too many people like it, it's already like too many people like you know you got to like contain it yeah uh the, that sort of decision making always makes me feel a bit uncomfortable inside yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just because like yeah i just think ev everything we're told nowadays is about like inclusivity and that's obviously great that's a good thing but i think when it comes to the art of gathering it's all about exclusivity and not in a ring style exclusivity of like oh haha this is like the inner circle and screw these people but just like exclusivity of like okay different group sizes mean different things different combinations of people mean different things you know it's just going to be a different vibe um if there's more or different people and so uh le let me get my highlights up for uh the art of gathering so this is a book written by uh a woman called priya parker and essentially she has done a lot of thinking and a lot of uh working in helping people organize better gatherings gatherings it could be a wedding it could be a baby shower it could be a dinner it could be like a networking event any kind of gathering basically um that's like her thing and she's written this book about it and this book honestly was like crack for me i mean in the introduction on on page on page five of the introduction page v you know you know how they use like roman oh, numerals and yeah <laughs> on, on just page five i have three highlights <laughs> well, well, what are your three highlights from page five uh okay <clears throat> and and look the reason this was like crack for me was because it just validated so much of the crap that i go on about about on this podcast um okay so highlight number one was we spend our lives gathering first in our families then in neighborhoods and playgroups, schools and churches and then in meetings weddings town halls conferences birthday parties and so on on, and we spend much of that time in uninspiring, underwhelming moments that fail to capture us, change us in any way, or connect us to one another. And I think I said almost this in much less eloquent terms a while ago when I was like, man, like, sometimes when you hang out with your friends, man, it's just less good than other times, you know? <laughs> I, I think I would have said something like that. Like, you know, sometimes like you just hang out or whatever, but like, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, like a lot, of the, a lot of the hangouts, a lot of the gatherings that we're, we're in, they do fail to connect us to one another. Um, and then she says, uh, as much as our gatherings disappoint us though we tend to keep gathering in the same tired ways most of us remain on autopilot when we bring people together following stale formulas hoping that the chemistry of a good meeting conference or party will somehow take care of itself that thrilling results will magically emerge from the usual staid inputs it is almost always a vain hope and this is the whole it, you know being intentional about yeah, social interaction thing this is, this it's is, like this is some good shit <laughs> it is absolute gold um ah and here we go and uh, to end my highlights on page five <laughs> gatherings crackle and flourish when real thought goes into them when often invisible structure is baked into them and when a host has the curiosity willingness and generosity of spirit to try and uh yeah i think 
yeah, that kind of rounds that off nicely. And so, and also one of the things, uh, let me just skip ahead to find a nice highlight for this. Ah, so chapter two is called Closed Doors. Um, and this is what I'm talking about of like, you know, exclusivity is the wrong word because it has like the bad connotations, but just like limitations, right? Um, so she says, inviting people is easy. Excluding people can be hard. The more the merrier we are told from childhood, the more souls, the more joy, the Dutch say. The more fools there are, the more we laugh, the French declare. At the risk, for, at the risk of dissenting from millennia of advice along these lines, let me say this. You will have begun to gather with purpose when you learn to exclude with purpose, when you learn to close doors. Um, and she says, thoughtful, considered exclusion is vital to any gathering because over-exclusion is a symptom of deeper problems. Above all, a confusion about why you're gathering and a lack of commitment to your purpose and your guests. Uh, and so the whole the chapter one is all about like purpose and like every gathering should have like a purpose and that kind of thing. Um, and this is like, a, 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 and she's like advocating for excluding people based on what that purpose is. Oh, that's interesting. So like I'm sort of retrofitting that to all of the kind of uh, great inspiring gatherings that I've had over the years and thinking oh yeah in all of those there was a distinct purpose and not like explicitly defined obviously yeah 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 but like you know like what's what's like what are the great what are the great gatherings of your time <laughs> so for example so, so, so for example one that one that comes to mind is uh, a couple of years ago me and like a load of friends went well, went to Singapore for some uh, medical conference type thing okay and it just so happened that on the very last day of this conference um, it was like me and two other uh, two other Muslim girls who I didn't actively go to the conference with like I, I knew them through university but you know not overly well yeah. whereas I, I i went to the conference and stayed at like you know paul's place and like my kind of best friends from medical school uh but it just so happened that you know everyone had had stuff to do and like two of them were like in relationships so they went out for blah 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 and so me and these two muslim girls just we, we just like went out to some restaurant to eat yeah. and the vibe was absolutely incredible because oh, nice. like we didn't know each other that well yeah but we had this shared background of being muslim and kind of being asian and all that all that sort of stuff yeah one of them had recently got married but and had like a kid on the way one of them was like you know uh, trying to find someone to get married to i i was I, th I think at the time in like two months into a relationship or something so there was just so much to talk about and the whole conversation ended up being about those shared experiences of relationships and stuff in that that context yeah and had there been anyone else at this gathering who yep. didn't share that sort of background or even had there been a fourth person i think it would have been a lot less intimate a lot less yep. less inspiring and i i, I kind of went away from that thinking wow that was like that was that was really great yeah um and it just yeah the purpose required exclusion yes absolutely Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, if there was if there was someone there who didn't share all those things and you guys wouldn't have talked about that stuff and you wouldn't have like connected yeah. on that level. Um, and yeah, that was part of like the reason for my exclusion at this dinner. It was like, a, it was basically like a uh, a sort of brown startup bros dinner in London. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there were like, a few other people I knew who kind of knew some of these people, but they, you know, they, they wouldn't have fit in the brown startup, startup bros. bros. <laughs> well, they, they were brown, but they weren't startup bros. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, like they, it was like a particular thing that brought us together, and and like we didn't, yeah, you know, we didn't spend the whole evening talking about like startup stuff, but it, it definitely like I mean, that shared identity. Yeah, it, share, it, it it makes a difference, and this is also part. Look, I hate to hark on about this. <laughs> Do you remember that time you you visited me at university and oh, invited everyone God. over to my room? Yes, I remember that time. This is exactly why I I was against that. <laughs> I think that was just like, yeah, that was very naive. And actually, here we go. People who aren't fulfilling the purpose of your gathering are detracting from it, even if they do nothing to detract from it. This is because once they are actually in your presence, you and other considerate guests will want to welcome and include them, which takes time and attention from what and who you're actually there for. Okay, I hate to talk on about this. <laughs> Let's go back to this thing that happened like five, six years ago, whenever it was. <laughs> <laughs> where me and two two or three and like three of my friends went to visit you in Oxford. Yeah. And then we went out for this like formal dinner thing with like loads of your other Oxford friends. And then it was a society dinner. It was not Tamil's fine, friends dinner. Fine, but it was in your college, right? So yeah. I mean, and so and 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 then at that point you were like, "Hey, why don't we all well, why don't the five of us so, Okay, look. No, hang, shut hang up. On. Shut up. We've talked about this on the Inner Rings episode. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. It would have it, it would have been hard for us to like go back to No, my no, no. That's not what I'm going to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm taking a different angle with this. But, at this point because from your lens you're hanging out with me who you weren't seeing very often and like three of my friends who were loosely who you, who you loosely know who you don't see very often and it yeah. was a good chance to have meaningful social interaction yeah. with them from my perspective i saw those guys on a daily basis <laughs> shared like a six hour bus journey with them where we chatted and you who i saw you know and and then therefore from my perspective that interaction of me these three people that i hang out with all the time and you is nowhere near as valuable as sort of a bigger group gathering where there are people from the oxford university islamic society 
some of whom are potentially, you know, attractive females. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, the, you know, just the whole, uh, f f from my perspective, I was, I was much more keen to get to know new people through this connection rather than just hang out with people I already hang out with. All right, fine. That That's why sense. it transpired that way. Um, yes. <laughs> All right, fine. You know, a man's got to try and get married, bro. <laughs> 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 got to respect the hustle. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Let's not bring, <laughs> bring that issue up again for at least another two episodes. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah so like spe uh, yeah so i think look, we should do a proper like book review thing on this book at some point and that's when i think we should talk more about like the purpose stuff that she goes on about um oh on that note um i am do I'm, I'm starting like a little book club series on my youtube channel this is like i haven't officially announced this so like you know if you're if you've gotten 40 minutes into this episode Ooh. it's the exclusive first time you hear it. yeah exclusive scoop a hot take um it's going to be like a book club thing where i, I talk about uh, basically you know summarizing books and talking about interesting things from books I was thinking that it would be good to actually have discussions with you and with other friends about them. Video and podcast record those discussions. Mm. And then they become bits for the YouTube video as well. Yeah, for so sure. I think for the next episode where we do a book discussion, we should arrange film the it. logistics such yeah. that we're able to film it in decent quality. Yeah. And then that's just, you know, repurposing content and stuff. Yeah, anyway, sorry, continue. That sounds pretty good. Um, so yeah, being more exclusionary than we are comfortable with is very important. Uh, the, o the other thing that she... Uh, look, I'm only like uh, a third of the way through the book or something. The other thing that she brings up is something that I brought up I think like three episodes ago or something about I think basically I was complaining about like oh I don't like it when the TV is the focal point of the living room and stuff you know yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah I was like whining about that and uh, yeah she starts talking about that stuff and she talks in particular about like table layouts so oftentimes right so oftentimes like you know if it's like uh, if it's like four people for example yeah. then uh, it'll be like two people on one side of the table yeah. and two people opposite yeah. them if it's five people yeah. what do you think the layout uh, should be I mean there's usually like we've got here so two two and then one person on the end uh yeah yeah so so two two and two and then one one person on the end of the table is significantly better than three on one side and two on the other yeah. side because like if it's three on one side and two on the other side the third person can't is, see. Yeah. yeah it's like a he's just like further away from people like d distance wise it's yeah. just not good and b the sort of the energy isn't really contained you know it's like open yeah. you know like he's like shouting into the void on his end of the table basically whereas if it's like two and two and then one person on that side it the energy is sort of contained is all, it almost makes like a circle kind of mm. thing and that makes a huge difference um and so it was quite funny this morning we just got back from uh, we had brunch with uh, you know our aunt and uncle are visiting from pakistan uh, and we all went out for brunch and there were five of us and you were on the end and it was like it was a three in the two uh, three and two situation because i mean i think restaurants and in general just don't think about this like if it's if it's a group of five they don't have a table for five they have tables for four or for six and so they seat you on a table for six and there was really no way we could have done uh two and two and one on the end we had to do a three and a two just by the layout mm. and i think that's very thoughtless um so yeah she looks she talks about stuff like this which is like i mean you, you can just you can imagine how happy it made me to read this stuff you know like some it made me feel like i'm not an idiot you know like there is something to all this crap that i've been spouting for the past couple of years yeah, yeah i can see that yeah and she says there's, there's a really cool highlight she says um yeah she says if you're on a picnic blanket you will hang out around your picnic blanket it's not because there's a fence around it it's because your picnic blanket is your mental construct it's not about sitting on a blanket versus sitting on the grass it's about claiming that mental space and making it yours and comfortable and safe oh you know? nice and the picnic blanket <laughs> thing it's just such a good like an uh, example of like containing the energy and stuff like if you're just in a park you know Th this is why i want to get a coffee table for the house because we've got the sofa right now and then it's sort of an yeah an, and an empty room the voice. Yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. sitting on the sofa and then like if you, like we, we've got a chair on the desk which, which can face the sofa we've got another stool we've got the piano stool we've got the con which can sort of form a circular six but there is no coffee table and so there is no sort of central focus upon which kind of energy can be directed yeah, yeah, yeah. and so i've been thinking of getting a coffee table even though it would make the room look a bit cluttered i was thinking of even getting rid of the dining table and just just having a coffee table in the room right um because then like you know you can have like a little cushion and everyone can can be yeah yeah, yeah. Around, around the coffee table so i think i think it's gonna happen yeah i think room design is super important house, actually the, uh, the the house by john lewis range is, is good to cheap one. Oh, really yeah. coffee table yeah nice I, I enjoy that vibe for now i think we shouldn't fr give free promo to <laughs> oh to anyone yeah to anyone. Skill, <laughs> skillshare.com forward slash not overthinking yeah um but no i think room design is super important and actually our flat in london is kind of rubbish on this on this front right now because the sofa area is like i think that the sofa placement is just kind of wrong and so it's it's kind of weird because when you walk in there's like the big dining table and so i think people kind of naturally sit down at the dining table to chill out yeah. because the sofa area feels a bit too like cramped or weird or whatever um and then the, and then when you're sitting at a dining table it's, it's definitely like a very different vibe to when you're sitting on sofas and stuff mm -hmm. and so you need to like 
Yeah, there's uh, so much thought that, that needs to go into this kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, so look, that is a sneak peek, I guess, of uh, a future book discussion that we'll do on The Art of Gathering by Priya Parker. Uh, if you haven't read it, and I'm almost certain you haven't, you should check it out. Uh, All right, I will, I will have a read of it. Uh, yeah, you should definitely have a read of that. Cool. I think that is a good place to end this. What have we actually talked about? We we, we, we kind of whined a little bit about the, the, the meta struggles of running a podcast. Um, and then we talked about, oh, yeah, your dinner parties and uh, general associated thoughts on the art of gathering. Yes. So I think like action, action points for me, uh, sort of th- think about how to build more margin into my life such that I can have more of a long term focus rather than just keeping my head above water. Yeah. And to th- think a little bit more intentionally about organizing uh, social meetups with a some with some sort of purpose, like as the host. Mm. I should have that purpose at the back of my mind before deciding yeah. who to invite. Cool. Uh, let's read out a review as uh, as is customary in these parts. Oh, I think we recently crossed 200 written reviews. So we now have 204 written reviews and 1,164 ratings. Wow. Like, uh, star ratings. Incredible. How many one-star ratings do we have? I don't know. I think it was just the one at the start. Ah, oh, here's, here's an interesting review. Uh, this is from Sage EM uh, from the United States of America. Uh, Sage says, you guys seriously compliment each other and makes every podcast enjoyable. Since quite a few of my friends don't enjoy having a conversation deeper than surface level, you guys make up for it and encourage me to ponder a little more. Lol. I hope to meet you both someday. Um, yeah, Sage, uh, if you and your friends are, aren't having the kinds of conversations that you want, then you should make it happen, man. You should, uh, yeah, be more intentional about the gatherings and all that kind of stuff and yeah guide guide the conversation to a place that you want i think yeah and i think th- that sort of thing does take real courage like yeah i, I, I remember the first i think i i, I mentioned it on here the first time I, that i tried this was a few months ago um i was uh, in a in a gathering with like five friends and the the thing i wanted to experiment was this idea of everyone having uh having like the floor for five minutes and sharing uh where they're in their life and what they're struggling with and that they'd like the advice of the group on yeah and i felt like uh, th- the way that i said it was like right guys this is going to sound really weird but yeah you know bear with me humor me i was like hedging like clearly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hedging a lot and like really uh, sort of making it actively sound as of like oh, all right god just kind of yeah, bear yeah. with me on this one yeah like, everyone freaking loved it yeah of course they did. <laughs> so. and uh, as it happens chapter three of this book is called don't be a chill host and look i'll just read out one more highlight okay it is a ubiquitous strain of 21st century culture is infecting our gatherings it's being chill the desire to host while being non-invasive chill is the idea that it's better to be relaxed and low-key better not to care, better not to make a big deal. It is, in the words of Alana Massey's essay Against Chill, a laid-back attitude, an absence of neurosis. It presides over the funeral of reasonable expectations. It takes and never gives. Let me declare my bias outright. Chill is a miserable attitude when it comes to hosting gatherings. Oh, nice. Well, yeah, keep, I'll, I'll mate, keep going. <laughs> keep, keep going. It's all good. In gatherings, once your guests have chosen to come into your kingdom, they want to be governed gently, respectfully, and well. Is your laissez-faire approach really doing your guests the favor you imagine it is? Does your agenda-free meeting help the young analyst? Or does her chance of adding something useful to discussion among seasoned experts depend on her being able to prepare in advance? Does your talk to whomever you want to approach help whoever uh, sorry does your talk to whomever you want approach does your talk oh sorry <laughs> come on man. let me learn to read does your talk to whomever you want approach help the quiet g- look that would that i think that would take one. like five I reasons like that should be hyphenated <laughs> talk. no no no, no. To, to be fair on prayer she hyphenated it correctly oh it's just hard to read <laughs> okay <laughs> like, ha, ha, it's hard to know what's emphasized so does your talk to whomever you want approach help the quiet guests speak at all if not given a protected turn does open seating at a teacher's conference help the three newcomers who end up sitting close together at the end of the table every time oh I, I i love it when there's a seating plan love it absolutely love when there's a seating plan because like that's the worst thing where you like go to a thing you're like oh crap like how do i figure out like how does this work and yeah and and she she has this phrase that she calls generous authority and she says generous authority is not a pose it's not the appearance of power it is using power to achieve outcomes that are generous that are for others the authority is justified by the generosity protecting your guests is in short about elevating the right to a great collective experience above anyone's right to ruin that experience it's about willing to be a bad cop even if it means sticking your neck out and it's generous because you're doing it for your guests so that they don't have to um yeah there's a bunch more stuff oh this is, i've only gone like mate. three chapters into this book i'm looking forward to a book discussion on this um this like is reminding me a lot about kind of board games nights mm, yeah. like if i'm often if i if i'm inviting people over for a gathering i will i will i will explicitly say this is just a takeaway and hangout or this is a takeaway in board games night yeah or like pizza and board games because that's just like you know it simplifies the decision of what to order because 
because then you don't have to worry about everyone yeah. like, oh, I kind of want sushi today. No, it's pizza and board game yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> There's the door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you can't make it, that's fine. Um, and then when the board games come out, it's like, you know, it was already specified on the, on the agenda that the board games were going to happen. Yeah. Um, and recently what I started to do is be like, oh, you know, I thought we'd try out this new board game. I, I've heard really good things about it. Here we go. Yeah. Rather than, so what board game should we play today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, like, oh, could we, we could do Articulate, we could do Avalon, we could do Monopoly, Monopoly, it's not even a proper board game, we could do Ludo, Ludo, it's just like yeah. RNG, yeah, all, this, all this sort of stuff. Yeah, the, the issue is that, like, yeah, I think this is something worth exploring and, and like, learning about in more detail. It's like the general, it's like the, the, the attitude of, like, chillness and democracy being seen as, like, absolute virtues and everything mm. in society nowadays, when, like... You need authority, man. You need someone to say, we're playing this damn board game, all right? <laughs> all like, right everyone if, sit down. If you lead it to consensus... Every, everyone close your eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you leave, leave this kind of stuff to consensus, it's just a terrible way to do things. All right, cool. I think that's a good place to end this. All right. Lack of consensus. Uh, democracy is bad. A big chill is bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Authoritarianism is good. <laughs> uh. And hopefully your cold will resolve itself in the next few weeks. That's it for this week. Thank you for listening. If you like this episode, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or on the Apple Podcasts website if you're not using an iPhone. There's a link in the show notes. If you've got any thoughts on this episode or any ideas for new podcast topics, we'd love to get an audio message from you with your conundrum, question, or just anything that we could discuss. Yeah, if you're up for having your voice played on the podcast and your question being the springboard for our discussion, email us an audio file mp3 or voice note to hi at notoverthinking.com. If you've got thoughts but you'd rather not have your voice played publicly, that's fine as well. Tweet or DM us at nOverthinking on Twitter, please. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.